I'm setting out on an adventure to find the resting place of the Red Lady of Paviland. This rugged coastal terrain is called the Gower Peninsula and it's on the southwest coast of Wales. What we're looking for is Goat's Hole Cave. And getting in is going to be no small challenge. Very, very dangerous environment to try and climb through. I've enlisted the help of Andrew Price from Dryad Bushcraft. Yeah, just remember I'm a flatlander, won't you? Oh, this is nothing that gets a lot worse. Oh, thanks. This is, a, this is for goats. Have we got to go through there? We've got to go past it. You're doing a great job there, Will. Am I walking in the right place? Am I walking in the right place? Just watch out for the dragon. Are you enjoying yourself? At my expense. <laughs> I feel like my legs don't work anymore. And you've bought ropes for what reason? They come next, do they? Yeah, that's the high bit. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Rapid heartbeats. <laughs> it's life affirming, isn't it? Well, thanks. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to go up here, Will. You are. We're going to go up here. All of really good holes. Oh, my God. Oh, this is probably where I'd die, isn't it? You okay there, Will? How are you feeling? Quite extreme, but you're doing a great job. Alright. Okay, so what I want you to do now is to come up to where I am and then kind of come around past me. If you if you can kind of go around me. That sounds like a real joy. Right. Have you been covered by a man like me? <laughs> Those people will pay good money for that, I'm sure. <laughs> While you're down there, well. <laughs> You're right there? Yeah. There we are. Okay, so you go around now along that ledge. And I'm just going to feed the rope out as you go past it. Woo! Well done. Let's just go 
to the point you feel happy and then uh, give me a shout. As you can see, without Andrew's help and expertise, I would have never attempted to do this on my own. I feel like an incredibly bendy, wobbly person who hasn't got any bones in their body. <laughs> you made it. <laughs> it's a bit magic, isn't it? You know, on Google Maps, it says that this is always open. <laughs> oh, man. So Andrew, briefly tell me about William Buckland. Well, there's a lot to tell. William Buckland was a real character. There's stories of him delivering lectures from horseback at Oxford University, and he was the Dean of Geology at Oxford University. He was also very Did he get religious. Off the horse? I, I think he delivered it off the horse, like, you know, <laughs> pointing at the blackboard while he was, right, yeah. while he was in the saddle. Uh, yeah, so he was a really eccentric character, a real you know, larger than life character. He was also very religious, so that comes into play when we start talking about the story of the Red Lady. And the irony is that he was never aware of the archaeological significance of what he found. He believed he found the bones of a, a young woman from the Roman era, so he was wrong on both counts there, and he died without ever really knowing how important that find was. But this for archaeology is uh, really a jewel in the crown for British archaeology owing to the fact it was significant as a funeral a environment placed within the cave from 33 to 35,000 yeah, years ago. It, it's, it's absolutely ancient and it's the oldest ceremonial burial in Western Europe to date. Right. Now you've seen how difficult it was to get round here and um, well he obviously came round here and then he had a floor to look at. So William Buckland came round the corner into this cave and he had to start attending to the floor, which is where he was going to find these amazing artifacts. Absolutely, but the floor then wasn't where it is now. So they had to get down about, probably about 20 feet at the entrance. So there was a huge talus cone, which is all bits of rock and uh, stalactite and things like that that had broken off and built up over the thousands of years. So they had to get through that down to the level and it was when they were digging through this enormous pile of earth and debris that they found a mammoth skull and the human bones. Hmm. So we have to chop the entrance in half? Pretty much, yeah. If we, if we were here before 1823, we would have had an entranceway about half the size of what we have now. Let's go back to 1823. Let's meet with William Buckland examining the floor. I'd love to meet him. <laughs> 1823 and funnily enough that's exactly 200 years ago William Buckland had made the pilgrimage to get into here and this kind of thing was evident from the cave floor with careful extraction they managed to raise the bones not the skull because that was missing. And as they looked further in, they found jewellery, mainly out of periwinkle shells. And he began to draw a picture that this skeleton 
was a lady indeed. The concept began of dyeing the bones. The question is, is why would you paint the bones of the dead with red ochre? Was it deemed to be the blood of Mother Earth? And by painting the blood of Mother Earth on the bones and then putting the skeleton back in to the belly of the mother that the soul could be reincarnated. Can we believe that 30,000 years ago that that could have been part of their spiritual belief system? It's without fact that something was going on right here. There is a thought that the bones weren't painted, painted at all, but actually the clothes that this person was buried in was painted. And as everything de decayed and dissolved, that the ochre went down and then became a stain across the bones. Quite where the head went, I guess we'll never know. safely my job's done so uh you had a good day i think it was a great day don't you i think so yeah cheers andrew it's been awesome <laughs> he's still alive that was an adventure that was and uh yeah it did raise my heart rate and i was quite careful um about selecting somebody that could get me in and i yeah it was an easy choice for me i've known andrew for a long time because he's run a bushcraft company over this side of the country. So we don't get a lot of time together because you're a long no, way. No, you're a fair old track away, aren't you? Away from, from me, yeah. yeah. But we always catch up at the bushcraft show. And, um, well, you came down a couple of years ago, didn't you, to, to go and see Pavlin Cave? And you oh, didn't quite get in because. I failed to get in. Well, it's not, enti not entirely his fault. So to get into the cave, you've got several options, one of which is to wait for an extremely low tide. But it has to be very, very low, and occasionally, if the wind is still on it, it even if it's a low tide, it still holds the foam, and it, it, the, the gully that you have to cross remains full of water and foam and things like that. So you did a good job, but you didn't quite get there. So yeah. we, today we took the more adventurous route that involves a climb and a scramble over some rocks. But uh, yeah, it was good. We survived, and that's the main thing. So on Facebook, um, you are known as... Well, I've... Dryad yeah. Bushcraft? Dryad, D-R-Y-A-D, Bushcraft. So we use Facebook a lot now for a lot of our short notice course bookings. So if there's anything uh, you're interested in doing in this area, we're doing a lot of foraging courses and wilderness gourmet courses. And uh, hopefully one day we'll have Will down to do flint napping as well. Yeah. So that'd be great. Well, you can tell he's a good old boy. So flick over <laughs> there, have a look what's going on. And maybe yeah. don't forget to hit that follow button. And... Um, Remember, if you've enjoyed watching this and it's your first time watching one of my movies, follow me as well. Thanks Great. once again for watching. hope it's been an entertainment. And remember, it's Will's Prehistoric Road Trips. You could go over to my um, YouTube channel and there's a playlist called Will's Prehistoric Road Trips and watch a load more. All the best. Cheers. Bye. Thanks once again to Andrew Price from Dryad Bushcraft. Thanks for keeping me safe and making it possible for me to get into Goat's Hole Cave. You can see the bones in the Natural History Museum in Oxford. <laughs>